Okay, now. Good afternoon, folks, and thank you very much for joining us for this uh, virtual uh, construction update meeting that we have uh, planned for you today. Uh, obviously, we welcome uh, folks who may be watching on Facebook or may be watching us on YouTube. Um, real quick, some housekeeping for you. What we have planned is about a 30-minute presentation, and this really is the entire rail line. We'll have more on the agenda in just a bit. But then the important thing is the next 30 minutes after that, we want to get a chance to answer your questions. And so there are three different ways you could submit questions to us. Uh, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, in the comments section, you can leave a question there. Uh, we'd love to get the name and perhaps the location where you're uh, sending the question from uh, so that we can acknowledge that. Uh, another way is at info at honolulutransit.org. Uh, that is one way to also send it. So those are the three ways you can submit questions. And you can submit them at any time during this meeting. And as we said, once we get done uh, with the presentation, that's when we plan uh, to uh, take your questions and really important for us. That's really uh, part of why we're having this is to have that sort of two-way discussion with you guys. So now we want to get underway. And for our very first presenter, our very first speaker, we want to welcome the Executive Director for the Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transportation and the Chief Executive Officer, Andrew Robbins. Thank you, Jai. Uh, Aloha and welcome everyone to our first ever virtual construction update meeting. Uh, my name is Andrew Robbins. I'm the Executive Director and CEO of BART. And it's a real pleasure to join you today and thank you for joining us. Uh, you know, the, the pandemic, the COVID-19 has, has uh, challenged our agency but has also presented us with the opportunity to conduct this uh, type of community outreach meeting in a totally new and unique way. Uh, so we are very proud to introduce this online format ver uh, via YouTube and Facebook, which allows us to have a greater reach uh, while connecting with uh, residences island-wide. Uh, our plan is to host these uh, virtual monthly construction updates for the next few months. I'm sure we'll, we'll all look forward to the day that we can all get back together face-to-face, -to -face. but for now, um, we look forward to the virtual aspect of community uh, meetings, and uh, this is the way that will carry forward uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us here at HEART to connect with residents and businesses uh, throughout the many communities uh, that we have construction activity in uh, to report to you the progress as re we reach uh, important project milestones. And I'm very pleased today to be joined by representatives from all of our construction partners to provide a comprehensive project update for you, west to east, as the project moves forward. Um, so we look forward to answering your community questions as well during today's meeting. So with that, uh, let me turn it back to Jai and uh, look forward to a very productive meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. We appreciate that. And now, uh, just to give you sort of an idea of what we do have planned, uh, here's the agenda. Uh, so we're going to start with a project uh, overview, and then we will start West Oahu Station Group, Farrington Highway Station Group. We'll continue to move east uh, to Kamehameha Highway Station Group. Uh, we have the airport guideway and stations, the city center utility relocation work uh, that is going on right now. Then we'll talk a little about the trains themselves, uh, the core systems, and some of the operations. And then, as we said, after the presentation, uh, we really look forward to some of the questions that we're going to get uh, so that we can get you uh, answers, not just from the construction team, but we also have some of our resident experts that are here uh, that will be able to answer your questions. So, again, the three different ways that you can submit questions uh, in the comment box on YouTube or at Facebook. We have uh, representatives who are watching over uh, that and can uh, copy those questions and get those questions answered for you. And then also, if you wanted to email them, info at honolulutransit.org. Okay, real quick, want to just give you an idea of, uh, if we could slide, uh, please. This is the actual rail project. So it starts at East Kapolei, and when it is all finished and complete, it will run all the way to Alamoana Center. So we're talking 20 miles with 21 stations. Now, we want to start from the west and work east, and so for the very first presentation, uh, we want to welcome Justin Barfield. He is going to tell us a little bit more about West Oahu Station Group. Okay, mahalo Jai. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, next slide, please. So um, 
Nan Inc. has built the three stations out west, and this is a look at the Kualakai East Kapolei station. The main headline on the stations out west is that we are tantalizingly close to being done. Uh, if you see on the screen there, we're 98% complete on the Kualakai station. Uh, this is right in near um, the Croc Center and um, Ko'olo Ula Mutual Housing. Those are the only two things that were basically in this area when we first started uh, four years ago. Upcoming work that we have to complete still yet is a 20-inch water line and a 24-inch sewer line. Uh, we have an estimated completion of fall 2020. Next slide, please. Here's a bird's eye view of that station, and you see that blue thing right behind the station. That's the Croc Center uh, swimming pool, which is quite a popular area, especially in the summertime. And in the foreground is Kualakai Parkway. That's where that uh, utility work, the water and the sewer line work, uh, we still have yet to complete in this area. Next slide, please. And now we go to UH West Oahu. This is the Kionii Station. Um, this is on Kualakai Parkway at UH West Oahu. Um, and you wanted, what I wanted to draw your attention to is there's three components to the station. In the foreground, you've got the platform. Running across Kualakai Parkway, you've got the pedestrian bridge. And then on the other side is the entrance. Uh, and then back there is also a park and ride that Nan Inc. constructed uh, that will um, be for riders uh, in the future. Uh, and on this station, we're 98% complete. We have traffic signal installation that needs to take place. And our estimated completion is fall of 2020. Next slide, please. So here's another view of the station, and this is, again, the platform side with a pedestrian bridge on the right side of your screen there. Next slide, please. And then this is what the entrance uh, looks like. And if you see, um, there's some beautiful artwork uh, right at the fair gate there, a little rising sun. I think that's pretty neat. I uh, just wanted to draw your attention to that, something you might not see uh, at ground level, but it is definitely there. Next slide. And our last station, Hono Uli Uli, this is the Ho'opili station. Um, it is right now located in a farm field, but if you know uh, what's going on in this area, the Ho'opili development is going gangbusters, and it won't be long until there are homes um, and this east-west street that will connect this rail station. We're 98% complete here. We have a landscaping work that's ongoing, and again, we're on target for fall, for this fall to be uh, power with this. Next slide. And if you look here, um, this is a bird's eye view of the station. In some of the areas where there's uh, dirt filled in, that'll be the spots where there's remaining uh, landscaping work uh, to be done. And next slide, please. And so now what I want to do is pass it along to uh, Patrick Watson, who will be talking about the Farrington Highway stations. Thank you, Justin. Hello, everybody. My name is Patrick Watson, and on behalf of Hawaiian Dredging and Honua Consulting, I'm going to be speaking to you on behalf of the rail stations that are being built out in the Waipahu area. Um, but before I begin, I just need to uh, say mahalo from the bottom of our hearts just for all of the, uh, the support and all of the, uh, the people out there in Waipahu that have been so gracious to us, and we just couldn't have done it without you folks, so thank you very much. Okay, next slide, please. The Hoa'i or Westlock Station. Uh, which is located on the intersection of Leoku and Leoole Street and Farrington Highway, is approximately 98% complete. So uh, we are currently in the final phase of the platform canopy deployment. Um, what that means is they've got about a 180-foot by 40-foot piece of material that they need to um, stretch out over the platform to provide shade and shelter for the riders waiting for the train. Uh, beyond that work, we also have the station names and directional signage installation going on. And uh, once again, our neighbors in this area, we have Don Quixote, Waipaho on the Malka side, and uh, First Hawaiian Bank and Zippies who have been unbelievably patient and supportive of us. So thank you so much, folks. And on the Makai side, we have Cutter Auto, and uh, we have Aloha Kia. And the fire station is right across the street from us, too, so they've also been very instrumental in, in helping us out. So next slide, please. So this is a good shot of kind of what we're at right now in terms of the work. So you can see some of the workers uh, over the Makai platform area. So this is a shot taken last Friday. So last week, Friday, they deployed the canopy over that side. And one of the questions that comes up uh, is, why do you folks have the cones out on the road when we don't see anybody on the roadway working? So this actually demonstrates why, because there's work going on over the lane. And so you might not be able to see the work, but there's actually um, construction workers above those lanes. So for the safety of the workers and the drivers, we need to keep those lanes under control. 
So this is eastbound Farrington, and we'll be continuing with some of these lane closures and single lane closures throughout the um, final stages of this station construction, but um, that just kind of gives you some insight so that you're not just wondering why the lane's closed. Next slide, please. Pohala or Waipahu Transit Center Station. This is the station between Mokuola Street and Waipahu Depot Street. And again, we're at 98% completion. The canopies have been deployed and they're uh, just finalizing the tensioning of those uh, canopies. So what happens is after the canopy is deployed, you need to slowly uh, create tension on the canopies. And it takes a while because the canopies uh, are tensioned and then they sag like any other material, then you have to retension. So that's kind of the process we're going through now. The station names are also uh, being installed, the signs, and uh, one of the remaining items at this station need to be completed is the Mo'olo Street sidewalk has to be restored. Once that's complete, though, you'll have a pedestrian and ADA compliant access way from Hikimoi Street, which is where the bus transit center is location, located, over to Mo'olo Street. So that's a new feature that wasn't there before and will help people move back and forth from the bus area over to Farrington. Uh, next slide, please. This is a shot of that station at night on the Maoka side. So this is taken from the highway in parking lot, and it kind of gives you an idea of what this area is going to be looking like when all is said and done. It kind of transforms the location. It gives it a kind of an elegance and a, a you know a nice clean new look. So um, that's something to, to bear in mind. Once this is all said and done and the street lights are all installed, it'll be brighter, safer, and just a kind of an upgrade to the area. Last slide, please. Halalani Leeward Community College Station. This is the station that is located uh, adjacent to the Leeward Community College campus to service the administration and the students to get to and from home and the college. 99% complete, so basically they're just doing final touch-ups on this station. Um, the, the signs are going in. These are station name signs as well as directional signs, so once you get into the station, you know where to go. And uh, once this is complete and Hawaiian dredging uh, is satisfied with the work they perform, they do a final inspection with Hart, and at which point when Hart is satisfied with the work, they turn it over and all is said and done. And so we're really close to the, the end of the three stations. And uh, we just, again, can't thank the people of Waipahu enough. And uh, Leeward Community College, the Vice Chancellor, Mark Lane, has been instrumental in helping us through this process. Um, and beyond that, we just want to say thank you so much for all your patience, and we couldn't have done it without you. So uh, that completes my portion of the presentation, at which point I'm going to bring Justin back in. So thank you very much. Uh, mahalo, Patrick. And I wanted to echo his sentiment as well about the uh, partners of our stations that uh, worked with us as neighbors, and they've been great throughout this process and uh, couldn't have done it without them. Next slide. So this is a look at the Wayava Pearl Highlands uh, station, um, and we are at 95% completion. This is by Sam's Club. Uh, canopy installation is ongoing, and in fact, we have some work going on today where we've closed down Kamehameha Highway eastbound uh, so we can erect the canopy fabric, and uh, that is ongoing. The other main uh, task ahead is this articulated concrete blocks. If you look down at the bottom of the screen, what kind of look, looks, looks like a keyboard or maybe a honeycomb, uh, that is um, a material, these concrete blocks that are used to help um, funnel water. Uh, the top topography here, this station is located right in the Wyava stream. Um, and so this station is built above ground, off ground, so that you can, um, it has to be because of this, um, the water situation there. Uh, and we are on track to uh, finish up in uh, this fall on this station. Next slide, please. Here's another view of that above ground nature of this station. So just the uh, entrance level is uh, off the ground by, by 20, 30 feet. And then on your right side there, if you see those, what looks like bushes and that palm tree, that area is right where the Wyava stream is. And so obviously this station is built, built to withstand uh, weather events that would affect the nearby uh, Wyava stream. Next slide, please. So here's the Kalawao Pro Ridge Station. We're at 95% completion. Uh, the canopy installation is ongoing, and we have miscellaneous steel work that's ongoing. I also kind of wanted to just draw your attention to the features of the station. They are mirror images of each other on the Mauka and Makai side of the station. So this is near Kalanohi Street. And um, one of the other features that, um, so you have the entrances on both sides, and, those, and then you walk up 
to get to either the platform level or a concourse level, which takes you across to the other side if that's where you need to go. And one other thing you can really see in this picture, and you'll see it more so in the next picture, is how small of an area uh, we had to work in, which is one of the construction challenges, and also how close our neighbors were while we were working. Uh, next slide, please. This sort of further illustrates this. So, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to the folks at Pro Ridge Terraces, the residents behind there, Territorial Savings Bank, which is uh, at your bottom right corner, and Car Stereo Express is on the other side. And then across the street, we had Homeworld and Best Buy. Those were our neighbors there. And even at all the stations, everyone has been really accommodating, so we appreciate that. Next slide, please. So last look we have here is Halava Aloha Stadium Station. We are at 93% complete. Um, one of the features that you don't see that's prominent in the other stations are the canopy arms. They are not in place yet on that station. We're targeting to do that in August, and then canopy fabric in the fall, and we're targeting, targeting completion of this uh, station as well in the fall. Next slide, please. Here's a ground view looking at Kamehameha Highway across to the station. This is located between the Salt Lake Inn and the Salt Lake Out. It's the old uh, overflow parking lot. And speaking of parking lot, next slide, please. This is a bigger view. This is a look at the uh, park and ride that we also installed. Again, this is that old overflow lot, and this is uh, nearly 700, uh, sorry, nearly 600 stalls, 580, um, and this will be uh, one of the park and rides for, for the rail project, and this is just a bigger view of that area, uh, so you kind of get your bearings of Salt Lake in on the left, the Salt Lake out on your right, Kamehameha Highway on the top. And that concludes my presentation. Back to you, Jack Cunningham. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Justin. We appreciate that. Again, we'll continue to work west to east here along our 20-mile segment uh, of, of, of rail line that's being built. Uh, the important thing is, uh, boy, you guys are good listeners, because we're getting questions already uh, that are sort of filing in. So the three different ways, uh, just touching base again with you, is uh, if you're watching on YouTube or if you are watching uh, uh, via Facebook, uh, in the comment section you can write a question, and we've got uh, some staff that are monitoring that. And then also, if you wanted to email in a question, info at honolulutransit.org. And so keep those questions coming. Okay, we continue to work towards town, and right now, airport, guideway, and stations, I want to welcome in Ben Myers. Ben? Uh, thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. I'm honored to be here on behalf of the STG joint venture. My name is Ben Myers. I'm the civil manager for the airport, guideway, stations section. Next slide, please. A um, couple of the highlights for the project, we are nearly two-thirds uh, complete and um, of the total contract. We've got about two and a half, 2.6 miles of guideway installed to date. The design is 100% complete. About 80% of the drilling is complete for the deep foundation work. And we have progress on all four stations. Next slide, please. Um, pretty good uh, aerial overview of the project. As you can see on the left side of the screen there, the restoration of curb and gutter and roadways started um, on the our west end of the project, leaving the Aloha Station area. Uh, the four light blue areas are the four stations and progress on all four of those, as I said. And the guideway installation is ongoing in three locations currently with the articulated gantries in two spots and the conventional gantry finishing up by Valkenburg. The focus of our column and drilling operations is on the eastern end of the project right now, um, tying into the city center project over there on Dillingham and finishing up in, uh, in the airport section. Next slide, please. Um, this is our first station that we started on, uh, Pearl Harbor Station at Radford Drive. We are currently right now about 11% complete um, construction's ongoing with the platform girders. You can see the blue forms there in the aerial spot by the crane. The electric work and um, track power and um, traffic signal and streetlight work is ongoing in this area as well. Next slide, please. This is a, a street rendering, street view. Um, you can see there's an elevator on the right side of the screen. The entry structure's on the left. Uh, stations fit into a real tight area. We were able to save a bunch of the vegetation, so there's some old historic trees there. It's fit in there real nice. Um, moving east of this station, we start uh, what we call Reach B, and the uh, overhead guideway installation is, like I said, almost coming to a completion in Reach B. We will um, take down the conventional gantry at uh, Main Street 
and it'll ultimately get relocated and, and reassembled on the eastern end of portion to finish up the stuff on Uelena and YY. Next slide, please. This is the airport station, about 14% complete. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much wedged in between two parking structures. The um, inner island parking structure on the left of the screen and the overseas parking structure on the right. The um, hammerheads and guideway have made it past the station. We're currently erecting the guideway over the toll plaza and moving towards the Paia direction. Uh, next slide, please. Here's an overhead or over overhead rendering of the station. You can see lots of green areas. Same kind of canopies that are characteristic of all the stations. And um, the electrical work and, and the column construction which has been ongoing. Um, the guideway installation will hopefully be past Paella and out of the way here about uh, end of August. Next slide, please. This is a, a street level rendering. These are the uh, pedestrian bridges that you'll, you'll land on after you get off the train and, and head towards the, uh, the terminals. One will take you to the sixth floor of the inner island structure and the other direction would take you to the fifth floor of the overseas structure. Uh, from there you would make your way uh, to or from the, uh, the um, terminals for your final destination or if you're arriving and taking the train you'll, you'll come through here and get your ticket and get on the train and, and head home. Uh, next slide please. Our uh, third station that we're working on is the Lagoon Drive station. We're approximately 20% complete. We've got the structural steel on the Malka side and um, starting the, the work on the Mackay side. The um, park or the Kiss and Ride location is on the right there and, and entries on both sides of the road. So it'll, it'll be a pretty neat, uh, a neat uh, space there. There's also intersection improvements. There's currently not a signalized intersection at Lagoon. Uh, at the time of completion, it, it will be and to support all the pedestrian traffic uh, to and from the station. Next slide, please. Um, here's a, another street view. As you can see, the, the signalized intersection, the, the entry, and, and the neat structural steel stuff. It um, will, will allow you to um, access the station real easy. The utility infrastructure is still ongoing on Uelana Street and YY Loop. We're currently working on uh, dry utility relocates or HDI and HECO work. Um, the, all the wet utility work is completed there and the dry utility should be complete here by the end of the year. The overhead guideway installation has started in the Kihei Lagoon Park with the, the third articulated gantry and is now currently working towards the Middle Street Station. Next slide, please. Um, again, here's the, this is the Malka side of the station, um, mirrors the, the Mackay side. and. Um, Pretty, pretty neat picture here. It'd be nice uh, new improvements to the intersection. Uh, next slide. This is the, the Middle Street uh, station, completely over water, uh, about 8% complete now. We're currently performing utility work on uh, Kamehameha Highway or Dillingham, tying into the city center job uh, ahead of the drilled shaft operations that are progressing that way as well. And like I said, the, the guideway is working its way uh, that direction from the Kihei Lagoon Park. One of the interesting uh, things in this picture is one of the, the shafts, the drilled shaft foundations in the middle of the stream there is 357 feet deep. So it's the, the deepest one in the system and most likely the deepest one in the, the state of Hawaii. So pretty big accomplishment for the team uh, to get that done. And uh, like again here we have a nice pedestrian bridge leaving the station and getting everybody to the, uh, the Middle Street Transit Center from the rail to the bus. So should work good. Uh, that's all I have for us. Um, but before I hand it back to Jai, I'd like to say, uh, you know, this is a, a big, a big honor to be here, and, and it, I'm not here by myself. Uh, lots of thanks to our partners at H. Highways, H. Airport, all the Hart staff, uh, the Navy, First Hawaiian Bank, all the utility companies have been really good to work with. But we also have about 500 plus uh, employees working for us too that uh, get it done. So very, very proud to be part of the team. Thank you very much. And I think you get an idea there uh, of just how sophisticated and, and complicated this build can be with the fact that you have so many different partners on so many different levels, uh, just with the STG alone there in the airport guideway system. I mean, you've got the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Air Force, uh, state, city, so a lot of different partners. Um, that's certainly the case uh, with what we're about to tell you now because city center utility relocation. I want to work, uh, welcome in uh, Mark Gravel. Uh, he is going to tell us more about what is going on. Mark? Thanks, Jai, Ben. Um, 
Mark Gravel is my name, and I'm the Heart Project Manager for CCUR. Uh, we don't have all the nice renderings of these beautiful stations, etc., because most of what we do is underground, and we're just trying to hide things. So um, I, that's not that's not the approach I'll take. I'll take the approach of explaining to you what we're planning to do along along the corridor here. Uh, so the first slide just describes uh, the west half of the city center re utility relocation project, and uh, the left hand of that is primarily Dillingham, and it moves down along Kaahi Street down onto Nimitz. Next slide, please. Um, on the left hand side, the purple portion of this is, is Nimitz again, and then it moves on to Halakawila, uh, then into Queen Street, where it moves on to Kona Street all the way to Alamoana, and that's the full corridor, and that's um, where we'll be working and doing utility locates through, throughout uh, with uh, the end goal uh, to clear access for the shafts for the guideway. So uh, the shafts that they were showing on underneath the stations, et cetera, the, the one that was 350 plus feet deep, uh, we're making room so that as the uh, guideway contractor comes through, uh, we can place those, drill them and install them and they don't have to worry about uh, other utilities that are in the way. Next slide, please. So the phase construction schedule that we're planning, uh, we start out in work area one, uh, and this is split. Uh, work area one as a whole is the Dillingham corridor. Work area 1A is from Mo Middle Street to Mokawea. Uh, we started that in March of 2020 with controlled access, and I'll go into controlled access on the next slide. But uh, we started that in March of 2020, and we we're anticipating completion October 2021. Uh, you'll see us on the street doing that work up until that period of time. Um, and I'll, as I said, I'll go into controlled access later. Once we get through, uh, that's when the guideway construction will start. So the construction will actually go beyond that October 21st date in that area, but the utility row locations will hand that off to the guideway construction area. In Area 1B, which is Mokawea to the Kapalama Stream, uh, we're anticipating a controlled access uh, implementation there in August of 2020 with a completion in December of 2022. 1C is the Kapalama Stream to Kaahi Street, which uh, we're anticipating in October 2020 through December 2022. And then the work on Kaahi Street, we started that back in the summer of 2019 with a substantial completion date of uh, planned in March of 2021. Next slide, please. From there, we move on to the Nimitz Highway portion of the work. We've been working on that location since the spring of 2019, uh, anticipating completion August 2021. Halakuila, we're planning that in September of 2020 with a completion 2022. We'll move on to Queen Street with a start September 2020 and a substantial completion of May 2021. Kona Street, we did get going on that uh, fall of last year with uh, some wet utility relocates for BWS and um, some sewer work in that area. So uh, we have gotten started on that and can have a planned completion of August 2021. Next slide, please. Uh, as described earlier, in, on, in the Dillingham area, what we've implemented there is controlled access where we are securing work areas for, for the utility relocation work on a 24-7 basis. Uh, this means that traffic will be restricted in one uh, lane in both directions with no left-hand turns off of Dillingham Boulevard except for at uh, Alakawa Street. Uh, anywhere else off of the side streets, you can turn left or right onto Dillingham Boulevard, but you cannot we will not be allowing left-hand turns off of Dillingham Boulevard during the controlled access implementation. You'll also note if, uh, if you've taken that corridor any time recently that uh, we have special duty officers at each intersection controlling traffic and that we've uh, maintained and implemented temporary bus stop locations where the bus is allowed to pull off and still allow the through traffic to go through with the intent of of maintaining uh, flow of traffic in that area and, and trying to keep the, the delays to a minimum. Uh, also, the sidewalk access, we've been keeping everything open. Next slide, please. 
Here's a, a bit of an overview of where we are in Area 1, the whole Dillingham Boulevard, like, as we said, controlled access in 1A. We're planning to implement the rest in stages as we move along. Uh, if you have traveled that area, you'll note that uh, there's a lot of construction that's, that's been completed and continues to be completed in 1A um, from middle through to uh, Mokowea. In Area 2, and, and in the rest of Area 1, until such time as we get controlled access, there'll be minimal work and it'll be uh, primarily completed at night to, to try not to interfere with the traveling public. In Area 2, uh, the construction at this time is ongoing with full uh, install of dry utilities, wet utilities, and with the intention of, of going uh, seven days a week and two shifts a day uh, throughout until we, we complete that work. In Nimitz, we're in a position where we were able to reduce some of the scope of the work. So the design is taking on a design change notice where we will be uh, redesigning certain aspects of the work and until that happens, there will be um, just preparatory work happening in that area. Next slide, please. Areas four and five are just at the beginning of the, the construction process. We are um, probing for existing utilities to verify existing utility locations in anticipation of installing the new utilities, as well as preparing for jet grouting uh, to uh, provide dewatering support and soil stabilization for when we do actually come in and put the, the utilities in place. In Area 6, as I stated before, we, we have moved along and we have done some wet utility install and, and we continue doing jet grouting in front of uh, the remainder of the utility installed. Next slide, please. Uh, other project-related work that you might see along the way are um, primarily to uh, modify existing structures that uh, are being um, taken over because of utility widenings, specifically along Dillingham, as the first three locations show. Uh, we are widening the road surface to allow for a median in the center for the guideway columns. And in doing so, the blood bank, Club Cleopatra, and service printers along the Dillingham Boulevard will require some modifications to, uh, to allow that to happen and allow the sidewalk to, uh, to become, and, and the road area to come much closer to the building. You'll also note the, the draw, uh, raw stress for less on 333 Ward. Um, will be uh, the demolishing of that building and the uh, prepare, preparation of that area for uh, construction will be starting imminently here. So you'll, you'll see that building go down and, and a lot of construction happening in that area. Next slide, please. Other construction that we have to coordinate with as we're doing the relocation project, uh, along Nimitz and, and Dillingham primarily, there's a city sewer project at uh, Waya Camillo and Dillingham, as well as some HDOT work along Nimitz that uh, include traffic, lighting, and, and surfacing projects. So you'll, you'll note that there's construction happening along the way. We're coordinating with that. Uh, but it will be a very busy area as, as the public travels through there. Next slide, please. That's the end of my presentation, and I thank you very much for the time. I'll be available for any questions later. And I'll hand it off to Anna. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that. I guess I just stepped into Anna's way. So let me, let me step out of the way uh, and let you uh, find out more about the actual trains themselves. And so Anna Cothy, uh, to tell, tell you a little bit more about some of the testing that's going on right now. Thank you so much, Jai. Hi, everyone. My name is Anna Kothi. I'm the Public Involvement Manager for Hitachi Rail Honolulu, and we're the core systems contractor for HEARTS. We have many responsibilities, but our primary role is the manufacturing, testing, and commissioning of the passenger vehicles or the train cars for the rail project. All of our passenger vehicles are manufactured at Hitachi Rail's main manufacturing plant in Pittsburgh, California, and they're shipped to Honolulu car by car, and uh, once they're offloaded, we transport them car by car to our rail operations center, also known as the maintenance and storage facility. And we're located out in Pearl City, right between Leeward Community College and Waipahu High School. And there, we put all of the train cars together. 
We work on testing and commissioning activities, and we currently have 12 full trains here on island. Um, our first, our, for our first opening, our interim opening, we're going to have seven train cars that are going to be part of that fleet. We have all of those trains here on island, and we're excited to be in the testing and commissioning phase for those trains. Next slide, please. So we've recently energized the entirety of the Segment 1 line, uh, which goes all the way from Kuala Ka'i uh, East Kapolei Station to Halava Aloha Stadium stations. And we're actively testing between uh, that full Segment 1 um, range. Uh, most of our train testing up until this point has been um, between East Kapolei and LCC. But now we're starting to more actively test out uh, past LCC all the way out to uh, Halava Stadium. So we expect the frequency of that train testing to increase, especially as the six facility contractors wrap up their work on the stations and as we continue to get more trains here on island. So we just want to take this opportunity to kindly remind motorists that while driving, remember to keep your eyes on the road, look ahead and not overhead. And I'd like to take this opportunity to reiterate my colleagues' uh, earlier sentiments and sincerely thank you all. Uh, in the community for your patience and support. We're looking forward to our interim revenue service and sharing more updates as we continue to progress forward. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you to all of our contractors for that really well done pr uh, presentation. Wanted to let you guys know uh, there's a couple of different ways to keep in touch with us uh, and to make sure that you are uh, always up to date on where we are, where we kind of stand. Uh, we have a 24-hour project hotline. Uh, the number there is 808-566-2299, 566-2299. Uh, we also told you about the email address. That's info at honolulutransit.org. Our website is honolulutransit.org. Then we have a number of different social media uh, uh, outlets that you can get in touch with us, so you can see those there. So now we want to get to the Q&A. So we've already had a number of great questions uh, that have been sent in to us, and so I want to read a few of those. Not only do we have our contractors who have stayed here, uh, but we also have, uh, besides the contractors, some of our resident experts, and so we want to get started real quick. And so uh, the first question we got was a YouTube question. Um, how many bidders from the last section from Kalihi to Almoana, what's the remaining budget, uh, how much funding is left uh, for this last Section. So we're talking about that city center section uh, from Middle Street to Alamoana. So I will look uh, to the side here, and um, we have our chief financial officer, Ruth Lord, who can come up and answer this for us. So Ruth, if you don't mind. Thank you, Jay. Um, I don't know how specific we can get into actually what the budget is for the last portion of it, but um, suffice it to say that is, it is actually included, the amounts that we're expecting are inclusive of the financial plan that we have included in our recovery plan that the Federal Transit uh, Administration had approved uh, last September. Um, in terms of how many offers we have, so when the project actually started working towards the joint procurement um, on the P3 with the city, the first or the RFP part one, as it's been sort of referred to, was actually a qualifications. It was a request for qualifications. With those qualifications, the submittals then were then actually taken down to three or less. Uh, basically a top list of or a priority list of offerers of three um, or less. So we can't, we actually, because it's a procurement um, that's still active, we can't actually get into the details of how many there are, uh, but we can say that there's more than one and there's less than three um, because we, we are in the RFP part two portion of that. Um, so I'll turn it back to Jai, uh, but that's kind of where we are with in terms of uh, what we can sort of disclose since it is an active procurement on the P P3 section. Thank you, Ruth. I appreciate that. That's a question that we do get quite a bit of. So uh, let's see. The next question, we have another YouTube question as well. Uh, how are you going uh, to construction or how is, how is construction going from Kalihi to Alamoana uh, since the roads are so narrow? So uh, let me see. We'll look to see which expert we get in, but some of the area can be quite narrow. Uh, Frank, <laughs> Frank Kosich, uh, he, he kind of knows all things city center, so it's either going to be him or Mark Gravel, but uh, no, it's Frank. Come on up, Frank. 
Good afternoon, everybody. Frank Kosick. I'm the Director of Construction for HART. Um, relative to the construction and the progress, we're not making the progress that we'd like to make right now, and that's predominantly associated with the finalization of our designs, not so much as the, uh, the width of the roadway. Um, we have uh, advertised a schematic that shows a general methodology or a uh, sequencing of the work that we've kind of mapped out once we finalize our designs that involves moving the controlled access along those areas of Dillingham to the Mackay in the center and the Malka side so that we can affect our utilities relocations as well as the, ro the, the road widening and then some of the street lights and stuff. We haven't really gotten into that really in earnest in 1B and 1C, uh, anything uh, Diamond Head of Mokawea. Uh, we're on the cusp of doing that from, say, Mokawea Street down to the Kapalama Stream. Uh, and the expectation uh, that you may have heard from uh, the project manager, Mark Gravel's briefing, was that we would be able to start doing that in the August time frame, and that's our expectation and hope. So I hope that answers your question. But thank you for your questioning. Thank you, Frank. And we have another question that comes in. Uh, and it's a YouTube question uh, from S.J. Abe. Uh, where will riders park for Kapolei and Farrington stations? Uh, the question saying, I don't see public parking lots near the stations. So who do we want to have come up for that uh, uh, to talk a little bit about our parking? You have to be patient with us, folks. We're, I have a number of different experts. Ryan Tam. <clears throat> Okay, Ryan Tam. Uh, Ryan Tam, you're up. Come, come in and I don't know if you got a chance to speak, but Ryan, there's the question. There. Okay, hi, I'm um, Ryan Tam, uh, Director of Planning. Again, uh, the, sorry. Again, the project has uh, parking ride lots. Uh, we've got a permanent one planned for the Hawaii Station, sorry, the Keonei Station at the University of Hawaii West Oahu. Um, over the long term, we also have, uh, we're working with the U University of Hawaii West Oahu to also place one at the first station, the Kualika'i station at um, the East Kapolei. Um, we also have a small uh, kiss and ride uh, facility at the Hawaii station, West Block. Um, park and ride facility, a large one, is going to be at the Waiava, the Pearl Highland station. So that's going to be 1,600 stalls. And then, of course, there'll be one at the Aloha Stadium station, the Halava station. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We continue with our questions. Another YouTube comment, I should say. That's the other thing. We've got not just uh, some good questions, but comments as well. Uh, and uh, apparently, uh, folks, happy to hear the shout out for the STG 500 employees. Uh, that's a good thing. All right. The next Facebook question comes in from Joy. Uh, regarding Dillingham work, uh, when does Hart's contractor expect utility work to be completed? Uh, let's see, we were last told it would take two years to complete the utility work through 2022. Uh, still the project date, is that still the project date or is 2022 dates also slipped a bit? And Frank, maybe you can come up to, uh, to talk about that, the work that's going on right now uh, as we speak on Dillingham Boulevard. So thanks for that question. Um, the date is holding. Um, we've, uh, as I've mentioned, we've had some delays, but um, we're doing some things to mitigate those delays. One of the things that we're doing is we're uh, seeking uh, additional resources through uh, procurement uh, of, of additional contractors to do work or along the alignment, not just necessarily Dillingham, but areas what we call two through six, uh, Evil A through Ala Moana um, station. And so we anticipate um, that we'll be able to maintain the schedule that we have uh, put forth. and. Um, we continue to assess our risk associated with the schedule and look for ways to mitigate it. But thank you for your question. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate that. <clears throat> and I uh, kind of want to uh, reiterate what uh, Director Robbins had said a little earlier. Uh, obviously, the past three or four months, the COVID-19 has sort of thrown things uh, into a sort of virtual world. We look forward to uh, perhaps the day when it returns back to sort of a regular uh, so we can, we can see folks in person. Um, and, you know, we had a lot of shout-outs today about some of the people who have been very supportive of this project. Uh, YouTube question from Cruz Vina, uh, who uh, Cruz is a, a huge supporter. We see him at a lot of the different uh, meetings, and uh, he, he's a great supporter. Uh, how soon will the rail be doing rail testing? 
Anna? So, so Anna had touched on this just a bit. So Anna is with uh, Hitachi Rail Honolulu. Here you go, Anna. Thanks, Jay, and thank you, Cruz, for the question. Um, actually, testing has been ongoing for a while. Uh, most of our testing has been taking place from Coppola to LCC. That was where our dynamic section was. So uh, we could run testing um, in our, what we call our second shift, so after about 4 o'clock, all the way up until about 9 or 10 o'clock at night. But now that we have the entire segment one section energized out from East Kapolei all the way to Aloha Stadium, you're going to see a lot more trains testing. And like I said, as our fixed facility contractors start to wrap up their work, we're going to be able to extend the hours that we're going to be testing. But right now it's going to remain in that second shift time frame, uh, early afternoon to the evenings and possibly overnight, just depending on what sort of tests we need to run and um, sort of what we're working with uh, at any given sort of period of time with, with each of our trains that need to be tested and commissioned. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thanks, Cruz, for that. And, uh, you know, the great thing about the virtual is you get a chance to reach people uh, that can be thousands of miles away to you. So thanks, uh, Jonathan C., for following the construction all the way from New York City. So. Uh, thank you for tuning in and, and showing a, a great deal of uh, interest in this project all the way out here. A uh, YouTube question. Uh, and we talk about some of our, the partners that we have. Uh, and we've done a number of different con condo outreaches, especially once we're into town here in the Kakako Alamoana area, downtown area. There are a number of different uh, condominiums uh, that will be uh, that we're going to kind of be working right in front of. Uh, Mike Boschman, uh, he is a resident manager at one of those. Um, he, he wants to know what safety measures will be taken to keep homelessness away from train and transit stations. So let me see which expert we want to hand that off to. I don't think Bob is there. So maybe perhaps Director Robbins can come up and, and talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, the train is for everyone. Uh, but there will be rules to ride, uh, and there is a code of conduct that is being put together, uh, led by the Department of Transportation Systems at the city and being supported by HART. So just like on the bus today, there are rules, and the rules will be developed for the rail system as well. So that would include things like no eating and no drinking, and uh, also uh, something like a maximum time to ride. So once you use your holo card, you enter a station and you access the system, you're on your way somewhere, and at some point uh, you're expected to depart the system, and there's a maximum time uh, that uh, you are expected to enter and exit. And if you want to ride some more, then you would have to come back and swipe your card again and come back in. Um, so that, that is one of the rules that, of course, will be there for everyone to uh, observe. Uh, we also have many levels of security to make sure that everyone is uh, uh, conducting themselves in an appropriate manner and being respectful to their, their fellow uh, commuters as well as to the fixed facilities and, uh, you know, uh, uh, using the system in an orderly fashion. So we have, uh, we have technology, so we have many cameras that are located all around the system. And there's also going to be a uh, security presence as well on the system. Um, starting with roving personnel that will be provided by Hitachi Rail, and these people will be the eyes and ears of the system. They'll have walkie-talkies, and they're also able to take care of any uh, any uh, potential problems with the system itself. Then there's going to be a dedicated security uh, workforce, uh, both in uniform and maybe not in uniform, that will be uh, roving around the system, riding on the trains, going through stations. And then finally, HPD, of course, will always be available to respond to any incidents that are needed. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Appreciate that. <clears throat> okay. This is one of the fun questions. <laughs> and I have a feeling it's from Cruz, one of the Cruz that we're referring to, I'm betting, is Cruz Vina. Uh, wants to know, will the parking lot at Aloha Stadium be open for UH football? Can I answer that one? Yes. Right? I've got, yes. So looking forward to that. And the fact that, um, like so many big cities, uh, if you travel to, to somewhere like a, a Oakland or San Francisco, so many, so many times the mass transit systems sort of tie in with some of their Major League Baseball parks and football fields. And so uh, with Aloha Stadium being our big uh, football field, and not just football, but we're talking about concerts, major concerts that can be held there, 
uh, that's uh, going to be a great and a very busy uh, opportunity and, and a station. So, yes, uh, we're looking forward uh, to being able to ride the train to go watch UH football and other big events uh, out at Aloha Stadium. So we appreciate that. Appreciate that question. Okay. Another question we have, and this one came to us uh, via email from Chris. Uh, what, is, what are those big yellow construction cranes at the airport, and what do they do? I'm glad you've, if you've been by the airport lately, they're very noticeable. So let me bring in uh, Ben with uh, STG again. Oh, great, great question. The, um, we call those the self-launching segment erector machines, and they move from column to column and hoist the segments uh, as they're delivered from our precast facility in Kapolei. The machine will hold the segment up and position it. We will connect them together with the PT rods and, and, and the epoxy, and then when it's final stressed, it'll release the segment and then jump to the next segment or next span on, onto the next column. So they're um, huge machines. We had to put them together here uh, on, on the island. They all shipped over in containers, and um, they're completely safe. You can drive underneath them when the when the segments are hanging. Um, when we're moving the segments around, we do not allow traffic underneath them, but uh, in off shifts, when the, the segments are secured from the hanging rods, it's perfectly safe to travel underneath them. That's why we, uh, we let travel through there, but uh, that's what they do. And they are very uh, noticeable, <laughs> quite noticeable if you've seen it. Uh, and at night when they're uh, working, it can be uh, it's a really quite the sight. So another question that we had sent to us via email, uh, this is from Misty, and Misty wanted to know, uh, when will everything be completed to Ala Moana Center? So let me welcome in, again, our executive director uh, who can uh, talk a little bit about the, the full completion. We talked about 20 miles, 21 stations. So uh, here's Director Robbins once again. Right. So uh, I think Anna talked about the uh, interim opening. Let me start with that. So from East Kapolei to Aloha Stadium, uh, we're looking at uh, March of 2021 to, to open that part of the system and to welcome passengers on board the train. So that'll be a very exciting uh, time for all of us and hopefully for the community as well. And uh, the next uh, opening will be to Middle Street. Um, once Ben and his crew finish all of their work uh, through the airport area over to Middle Street, and we're anticipating that opening by 2023. And then, uh, the final segment is our city center segment, which will extend to Ala Moana Center. And uh, we're anticipating that to be open by March of 2026. We did have a little bit of a delay associated with COVID-19, uh, wrapping up of our utility work, moving into the construction of the guideways and the stations through the city center area. Uh, but March of 2026 is what we have now announced as our intended opening date. And we'll I'll look forward to that that time as well. Thank you. Thank you, Director Robbins. Appreciate that. Okay, another question. This is great. We've had a lot of really good questions, and we appreciate uh, your participation in this virtual uh, meeting that we've been able to have. Uh, this came via YouTube from uh, Alan Carter. Uh, Alan wanted to know, will there be a pedestrian bridge or crosswalk connecting the Pearl Highlands Station with Pearl Highlands Center? So let me step out of the way and have Ryan Tam come here uh, to talk a little bit about that. Hi, so we are working with our partners at the City Department of Transportation Services to actually obtain uh, additional uh, federal funding to try to uh, put that link in. So right now the crossing is going to be a pedestrian crossing, um, signalized at least for part of it, um, so that you'll be able to cross to um, Koala, Street. Koala Street, sorry, uh, cross to Koala Street. And so over the long term, we're looking to see, uh, again, how to, how to get additional funds to try to make that happen. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. Uh, this is a question that we've gotten quite a bit, and I'm, I'm thinking that it's Director Robbins that might want to handle this one. A YouTube question coming in from Jonah said, why did construction start on the west side versus in town? And we've had that question. Uh, back in the good old days before COVID-19, we've had that question asked to us a lot. So let me uh, have Director Robbins come up to answer that as to why start on the west side as opposed to in town. 
Well, I, uh, this is the subject of a great debate uh, ever since I've been on board. I've heard uh, really good arguments, really, on both, on both sides of this one, you know, start in the West, move East, or start in the East and move West. And I think, I think the reason why it was chosen to start in the West, first of all, it's our West Side uh, residents that really uh, need the rail. So, you know, we're very excited to um, be starting up the first segment from East Kapolei to Aloha Stadium first. And that will actually help serve uh, West Side residents in moving around uh, in that area, as well as uh, meeting up with express buses that the city plans to run from Aloha Stadium that will take people the rest of the way into town. So that, that perhaps is uh, part of the reason. Uh, there's a technical reason in that we needed to find the land to have a maintenance and storage facility, which you heard is out in Pearl City. Um, if, uh, if the project started in the east, it would have been problematic in finding a suitable location to store and maintain vehicles as well. And uh, I think the construction uh, was probably uh, a little bit uh, more straightforward starting in the west as opposed to starting in the city center. Uh, so those are some of the reasons I think that uh, have been brought up as to why that decision was made. But uh, again, uh, there are some good arguments as well for doing it a different way. And somebody had to make the call and, and that's, that's the way that the project has been proceeding. Thank you, Mr. Robbins, appreciate that. Uh, we get a lot of questions, uh, especially now that we've had a couple of different train days where people can actually get onto the real trains. Uh, and we had a question come in from Lily, Lily that said uh, via email, info at honolulutransit.org, what types of things can I bring on the train? Uh, can I bring on my bike? So let me welcome in Anna Kothi once again with uh, Hitachi Rail Honolulu. Thanks, Jai, and thanks for that question, Lily. Um, I just want to start with, first of all, all of our trains are ADA compliant, so all, we'll look forward to welcoming um, all of our accessible passengers uh, on board. We do have very comfortable seating um, for those folks who, who do need to utilize it. And yes, absolutely, you can bring your bikes on board. Uh, we have bike racks on uh, all of our trains, on, on to our middle cars of our, of our four-car trains. And uh, if, if those fill up for some reason, there's plenty of space in the aisles. You can definitely comfortably stand with your bicycle. Uh, if there's not a place for you to put it in the rack, uh, you can bring strollers on board. You'll be able to bring luggage on board. Uh, we're also the first uh, train system in the United States to have uh, surfboard racks. So that'll be really exciting. And those also will double as luggage racks. So lots of space in the trains. Um, you can definitely bring everything that, with, everything that you need with you on board. Thanks. Okay, a couple more questions we want to try to get to before we, we uh, run into this. So uh, another YouTube question coming in, this one from Mike. Uh, at the conclusion of underground utility relocation work, especially city center, will roads be repaved? Frank, can you come up here and let them know about that? <laughs> that's a good question. Um, that's the, probably the final piece of um, the work. So the utilities relocation is providing the opportunity for the, the drilled shafts and columns to be put in place. And so that's kind of spot work. So the expectation is, is that we, as we widen the road and um, in, in some places, in places to, to maintain the, the right of way, uh, we're also going to pave as well and refinish that as well as uh, the street lights and those kinds of things. So that restoration is, is part of what will be the the station and guideway contractor remit moving forward. Um, I would add as a part of that, we're doing the utilities relocation, but we'll continue to look at as we progress with the work and we bring on the guideways and station contractor, uh, the controlled access, and as we finish the utilities re, uh, relocation work. Expectation wouldn't be that we would have controlled access to that whole area for that entire time. We'd only have it when we absolutely need it and turn it over as the conditions uh, dictate. So thanks for your question and appreciate your input. Thank you, Frank. And yeah, if you've been into the Waipahu area or if you've been in the Pearl City, Kamehameha, uh, uh, Aia area, Kamehameha Highway, Farrington Highway, both of those uh, kind of show you kind of what does happen once uh, the, the guideway is sort of makes its way through there uh, with the improvements that will go to the highway. 
uh, with Dillingham and places like that. Okay, another question, this one coming from YouTube. Uh, Susie Chun Oakland, we appreciate you uh, weighing in with us. Uh, she wants to know, how will private modes of transportation like vans, taxis, et cetera, coordinate with the rail system to make passengers' experience efficient and safe, uh, one out of three people being senior citizens? So, Director Robbins, do you want to handle that, or are we looking at Ryan's hand? Ryan, is Ryan still out there? No. Okay, Director Robbins, it looks like he's defaulted to you. <laughs> okay, so the question has to do with uh, how private modes of transportation such as vans and taxis, will coordinate with the rail system. Um, well, certainly at the stations, I think, will be the, the, the logical uh, answer to that question. And as you heard before, there are kiss and ride uh, drop-off locations at the stations. Um, the curb space might be limited. Uh, that's going to be looked at by the uh, Department of Transportation Services at the city who will oversee the operations and maintenance. And the reason why DTS is involved in the overall operations and maintenance is, is very much to the heart of this question, to coordinate all of the different modes of transportation as, a, as an integrated system. So bus, rail, um, we see the Beaky system being integrated in the near future as well, bike racks, walking, and certainly uh, taxis, um, uh, internet-based uh, ride services as well. So there'll be appropriate designs at stations to allow for the drop-off and pick-up of passengers. Thank you, Eddie. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. Thank you guys for all the questions you sent in. Some very good questions. Obviously, there's a great deal of interest in the project. Uh, and I think this one is a good one to kind of wrap up on because I think Director Robbins will get a chance to uh, answer this one. This one coming in uh, via YouTube from Jonah. Uh, how does Honolulu's rail system differ from other rail metro systems within North America? And I know uh, Andy takes a great deal of pride in what we're building here, so if you don't mind, Director Robbins, with the uh, answer to this final question. Well, thank you, Jonah, for that question. Uh, yes, we're, we're building a very unique system. It's the first fully driverless cross-urban system of any major city in the United States. Uh, in the industry, we call this an automated light metro system, driverless, and as, a, as uh, compared to the long trains that you might see in the New York subway or even the BART system in San Francisco, where you might have a 10-car train that's 800 feet long, our trains are four cars, consist of four cars, about 250 feet or so long. So they're shorter trains, but thanks to the driverless operation, they come more frequently. So when we build out the system to Ala Moana during a peak period, we're planning five minutes between trains. So it's really designed to run more uh, like a utility. And perhaps the best way I can uh, uh, explain that to you is when you turn the water on uh, from a faucet in your home, you expect the water to come out. So this is what we're trying to do with public transit. From the time you show up at a station, We'd like a train to be there so that we minimize your waiting time. And if you just happen to miss a train, another one is coming right behind that train. And that's thanks to the driverless operation where we can regulate the system and have this short time between trains. Well, folks, thank you very much for, uh, for tuning in to this uh, virtual community meeting. We appreciate all of the great questions that were asked. Uh, if you do have questions, we weren't able to get to necessarily every single one, uh, but if you do have a pressing question, uh, you, that info at honolulutransit.org, uh, that is uh, one way that you could send it uh, and we can get a response to you on that. Uh, as Andy had said at the beginning of this, uh, with COVID-19 and with the sort of uncertainty of, of completely reopening, uh, the next few meetings may well be virtual. For the very latest, you can always log on to our website at www.honolulutransit.org. We will, of course, notify you uh, and give plenty of time, plenty of notice to let you know when our next meeting, uh, virtual meeting, is going to be. But we appreciate you joining us today. Uh, thank you for the wonderful comments. Thank you for the great questions. And until we see you uh, once again, aloha.